Hi, this is Dr. Fast here. Now recently I replaced the front engine mount on my Nissan Quest which has a V6 3.5 liter engine and I did a video on that. So if you're interested in seeing how to replace that I will put a link in the description and also at the end of the video. What you're looking at here is the old one that I took out and I thought before I toss this in the trash why don't I dissect this and show you what is inside this engine mount because as you can see there's a wire connected to this engine mount this is an electronic engine mount now before I open this up let's quickly talk about the purpose of an engine mount basically is used to support the engine or transmission from the chassis of the vehicle it helps isolate noise and vibration when you're driving the design of an engine mount is quite simple with this one I have here these two bolt holes here will bolt to the chassis and this one in the middle will bolt to the engine. Around here is rubber and this is what gives you isolation between the engine and the chassis. And if I turn this around, this is the bottom of the motor mount. You see a module here held in with two Phillips screws. Let me remove them. So let's have a closer look at this module and it's actually made by Bridgestone. If I turn this around, there's a rubber gasket here. So being curious as to how this really works, I did some digging around. I looked up the service manual for my vehicle and looked up the electronic controlled engine mount diagram. And here it is. It tells you that there are three pins going to the electronic controlled motor mounts. One of the pins goes to 12 volt constant and the other two pins are controlled by the ECM. On the following page there is a table here that tells you what is the DC voltage supplied by the ECM that goes to those two wires I mentioned earlier. Now if you look at one of the wire here at idle this wire is 0 to 3 volt on the other wire, during idle, it will have 11 to 14 volt. And when it's not idle, this wire becomes 11 to 14 volt, and this other wire will become 0 to 3 volt. So I've gone ahead and cut the connector off the wiring harness, and as a quick test, I have a 12 volt power supply here. Now, earlier in the table, you saw that it varies from 0 to 3 volt, 11 to 14 volt. I'm just going to simply use 12 volt here and connect the positively to the red wire here that requires 12 volt and then I'll connect my negative lead onto either the yellow or the blue and you'll see the center pin rotate now you'll notice every time I touch one of the wire it will rotate a quarter turn and then stops So let's go back to the motor mount. Now when I first took this off, there was a small metal piece that fell out which used to connect onto this end right here. And it's inserted into the slot that you see right there. And if I take a screwdriver, I can actually turn this. Since this part is already broken, I went ahead and cut open both sides. And I was able to remove this center piece here. and inside here there is a hole you see when I turn this at this end there is a valve that rotates at the same time so let me give you a closer look so let me put this center piece back in and when this engine mount is brand new this bottom half here is completely sealed. There used to be hydraulic fluid inside this chamber and when the motor on the bottom turns it opens and closes the valve. And the way this engine mount works in the Nissan is when it's under a thousand RPM this engine mount is soft and if you go above 1000 RPM this engine mount will stiffen up. So what happened with this motor mount after it gets really old 
is that there's a crack and the hydraulic fluid leaks out and therefore it loses its effectiveness to dampen the engine vibration. Well, I hope this video will help explain what's inside these electronic hydraulic motor mounts. If you have any questions and comments, please let me know. And don't forget to click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.